praise God. Uh, praise God. All right. So, if we can stand for the reading of the word, I'm going to go into the book of beginnings. So Gen Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 through 23. Um, so, uh, okay. So, okay, so it's, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord and Abraham drew near and said wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for your word today, God. We thank you for peace, oh God. We thank you for truth. And Lord God, I just pray you speak through me, oh God, to your people, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that your anointing will flow, God. And I just pray, God, that your word will fall on good ground in our hearts, Jesus. And I pray that we'll do something with, with your word, Lord God. And Lord God, thank you for the leadership in this house, God. I'm submitted to you. I'm submitted to your spirit. I'm submitted to the leadership in this house, and Lord God, we just thank you, oh God, for the privilege to serve in your kingdom. And we exalt you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I just want to give honor to the leadership of Living Hope, Pastor State, and Pastor Haldeman, and all the leadership. Um, and I give honor to God. So, Pastor asked me to speak um, on who will cry for the people. So... The book of Genesis is foundational to everything we believe as people of God. In Genesis 3.15, the Messianic prophecy is introduced for the first time in Scripture. In Genesis 11, 1, 9, 1 through 9, we read about people speaking in diverse languages for the first time. And in our main Scripture text, we read about the first intercessor in the Bible, Abraham. And we also see the word cry for the first time in the Bible, in this passage of scripture. So in the beginning of Genesis 18, just given context of the whole chapter, we read about God appearing to Abraham in the theophany with two other angels. And the theophany, if you all don't know, is a temporary or visible manifestation of God to man in the earth. And so Abraham, he asked the Lord not to pass him by on his journey with the angels. Abraham wanted to serve him, serve him. And so Abraham washed the Lord's feet, <laughs> right, and the angels, right? That's the first time foot washing is mentioned in the Bible. And, and then he asked Sarah and his servant to prepare a meal for the Lord and his angels. And they prepared a calf, they got some butter, some milk, some water. <laughs> and they and the Lord and the angels ate. Yeah. Like, that's powerful. Like, <laughs> God eating. Like, wow. Um, so, and then God tells the Abraham is, um, that he's going to, he told him the specific time that he and, he and Sarah were going to have the promised son. And, you know, Sarah laughed, and, you know, because she doubted, but, and she was afraid, too, uh, when God found out that she laughed. And she like, no, I didn't laugh. Like, no, God, God knows everything. You did laugh. And so, um, so she was, you know, a little afraid about that, but, but God promised that. He, he confirmed it. So, then, after that, there's a shift. And, and God is, you know, wanting to give Abraham insight into what he's about to do to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. So I'm going to read verse, go back to Genesis 18, 16 through, and I'm going to read um, up to 19. 
So it said, and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And then, the, you know, the next two verses I already read about um, God telling Abraham that the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and their sin. And so, again, uh, the cry is associated with the, Sodom, the people of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. And the word cry there is, in the Hebrew, zayat, which means a cry of distress. So God came down as a theophany, number one, because of their cry. And... He, I believe he allowed Abraham to hear their cry as well because he was there when the Lord told him and when he shared his, and when the Lord shared his intentions. So it was a cry of distress and misery. It, it was, and God also, number two, came down because of their sin. So I put those two things together and I, I noticed that it's the cry of the sinners. And so... Their sins and their cry had reached up to heaven at that point, and God wanted to know if that cry of distress and misery would become a cry of repentance. If you, if you read in verse 21 of, of our main scripture text, it said, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry. So God wanted to see if they were doing works meet for repentance. Like, they had to do something as a result of that cry. If they're, if they're so distressed and in misery, what are they going to do with that misery? Are they going to turn to God and repent? And so, uh, for, unfortunately, they did not. And so, Abraham, sensing the imminent destruction of the, these people of Sodom and Gomorrah, began, in verse 23, to draw near to God and began entreating for the people. Entreat means to ask someone earnestly or anxiously. Uh, he asked God six times if he would spare the city if there were a certain number of people, righteous people, in the city. The same word used for entreating is the same word used for interceding, which is paga. So if you look up the word paga, it's entreat or intercede or reach for. Uh, and so, I believe that when we now put ourselves in, 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 you know, in Abraham's shoes, when we inter uh, draw near to God, we'll begin to intercede. And we will begin to reach for people in the spirit, like through our prayers. Um, because that's the heartbeat of God. When we become close to God, we, we know the heartbeat of God, and that's for reaching people. And so... I believe the act of intercession can produce a cry in the one who's interceding. Um, Abraham cried twice. He said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. There was, there was a cry of Abraham, like, you know, just, there was a cry of the intercessor. There was a cry of the intercessor. So he had to cry of the sinners, and he had to cry of the intercessor. And so he, he asked God if there were 50 righteous people. If you read verses 23 through 33, you read about this intercession, this intercessory prayer of Abraham. And so he, he asked if there were 50 righteous people in the city, would God spare the entire city? And God said he would. And then he asked, okay, if, if there's 45, then he went down to 40, then 30, 20, down to 10. And God said each time he would spare the entire city if there were just basically 10 people that were righteous. And, and ultimately, we read in, in chapter 19 that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, but Lot and his two daughters did make it out. And because Lot was found righteous in God's eyes. You know, we read it in the New Testament, you know, when 
It said that Lot was vexed by the conversation of the living, the lifestyle of the Sodom, Sodomites and those who lived in Gomorrah, and you know, he, his righteous soul was vexed. So, um, so yeah, so God did spare, and I believe that God spared Lot because of Abraham's intercessory prayer. And so, God had mercy on Abraham, I mean, on Lot. And so, now in Ezekiel, I'm going to transition to Ezekiel 22, um, 30 to 31. In that verse of scripture, we read that God looked for a man to make up the hedge and stand in the gap for the people of Israel who were destined for destruction because of their sin and rebellion. So let's read it. So it said, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord. So he looked for a man to stand in between his wrath and the people who deserve it, God's wrath. He looked for an intercessor in the land, and unfortunately, he didn't find one. It, it could have been a man or a woman. He didn't find any in, in Israel that would intercede and stand in the gap for the people. And so I want to say, let that not be one of us. We need to be intercessors, you know, for our families, you know, and just for the lost souls of the city. So we must cry out for the people of this city in D.C., in the surrounding areas, and in this nation, we must cry out to God that he will have mercy. Um, we, we must draw not near to God, and we will know the heartbeat of God, and he will give us insight into what we should pray for concerning others. I believe our cry of intercession in righteous living is holding back God's wrath and judgment on our city. There's a lot of evil things that are going on in this city that we don't even know, but God knows. And so God has placed us here to stand in the gap, to hold back God's wrath. And so, you know, there's witches in the halls of Congress, there's witches in our government and in the private sector. There are, there are war warlocks. They're, they're, they're fighting to snatch, to steal the souls of people. And they're working for the devil. So we, though, we're working for God. And we're going to reach for them. And we're going to snatch them out of the grips of hell. And so, and so we see a great example of intercessory prayer in Job, chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. It says, Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests, how ye ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholding from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas, for the, for the day, the, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. And so we read in verse 13, God was, was telling the ministers, to cry, right? To, to gird up themselves and lament and howl. They were supposed to be the examples to the, to the people of God. And lament and, and howling is like, I think of it as a travail, like, like women travail in birth. We have to tra travail in the spirit and just like, just cry in the Holy Ghost and pray in the Holy Ghost and just weep and just, just, Set, up, set aside our own desires and just just seek the face of God. And, and then he calls the people in verse, verse 14. He says, sanctify your fast, call a solemn assembly, so assemble yourselves together, gather the elders and all the, land, the inhabitants of the land, and into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. So we're supposed to cry. That's a corporate cry for the people, the, the lost people. And so that will get the attention of God. 
that will get the attention of God. And in verse 15, it said, alas, that, that's another, that's a, just a deep cry. For the day of the Lord is at hand. It's a warning cry. Destruction is coming. Come on. It's a warning cry. Yes. So we have to let people know that God is coming. And if you're not right with him, you're going to die and burn in hell. And so we have, to, we have to let them know. And so my question to you all is, who will cry for the people of the DMV? Of the DMV? Who will cry for the people of this nation? Will it be you? Will you just think of, about yourself or your problems in your time of prayer? Or will you put your, your knees aside to cry out for the lost, your lost loved ones, your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, your bosses? The people on the metro, in the grocery store, whatever business you go to, will you cry out for them? We need to be reminded of how bad hell is. We need to be reminded of how terrifying and horrifying it is. That's eternity. And if people die without Jesus, they're going there. We must cry out for them. We got to cry out. Zion must cry out. In Jesus' name, cry out. Ye kara, 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 ye kara. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Oh, church, cry, cry. Jesus, who walketh not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Jesus, we pray in your name, God. Give us more of your spirit, Lord. Give us more of your spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, the good thing is, God, I believe that we are going to see this revival. Lord Jesus, the seeds that are planted, even by Brother Will, God, by Pastor Satan, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, hallelujah, it's going to bring a harvest in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I believe you're going to heal the land, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 